Oke. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. This is a Sunday round table uh, where we explore issues impacting the Jamaican people and the most recent one, which is, I think is of concern, is the local government election, because there's still some amount of confusion as to who win, who lost, and what is the balance of power. So I, I invite Paul Burke to join the discussion, OK? So I'm looking forward to a very informative discussion. I'm also inviting the listeners to take part in this conversation. If you have questions for Paul Berg, then post it in the chat and we, we try to get some answers. Paul, you're with me is Patrick Patrick. You have you got you met Patrick before. Uh, you know Lars Crawford and of course John Arden. This is the panel Good for afternoon, you. all. Good afternoon, all. Okay. Big up, uh, big up, man. Can barely hear you, though. I don't know why, but yeah, 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 yeah. You but no, it must be when you were sort of Ooh, relaxed. Back. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, I'll Paul. Move, Welcome. I'll move forward a little bit. Okay, Paul. The local government come and gone. PMP won the popular votes, but they lost the local government election according to some people in jamaica i'm not sure if they are right or if they are incorrect i'm not sure i'm hoping that you can clarify with us what is the final result and as a member of the pmp you could give us your insight as to what was it a, pro, a progress for the pmp or a setback given the campaign that they launched for two years, PMP out on the road. That is the argument. The okay, question, so... I, I think the question more than anything is, is Mark Golden. Did he make an advance, consolidate his leadership in the People's National Party? What the hell is really going on? So good afternoon to you and your viewers. Obviously, the People's National Party would have wanted to have won outrightly. So, as you know, in 2016, the local government reform finally took place with the three strategic laws, a reform that had been discussed for years and years and not happening outside of the creation of the Portmore municipality. So we have in that law, we have municipal corporations, which you would know as your former parish councils. But it also speaks to city municipalities, which we only have one. And we speak to town municipalities, which we don't have any. Linstead was slated, I believe, to have been the first town municipality, followed by Old Harbor. But right now, we have two categories out of the three permissible categories under the law. So Portmore is a city municipality, which is contested for. And whichever party has the majority of representatives in Portmore wins the corporation. But there's also a separate election for mayor. So you can win the corporation in Portmore and not necessarily have the mayor. And we have had one situation like that. Paul, in the past. Paul, Paul, just one second. You, you went out for, for a while, so we, we missed some of what you had to say. Okay. You can just back up a bit. Um, you, you started so, in terms of the first town municipality um, of Linstead, and that's after that no. you, you, you went out. No. It was envisaged that at the time that Linstead, followed by Old Harbor, would have been the first town municipalities. That never happened. 
So although the law allows for three categories of municipalities, the municipal corporation, the former parish council, the municipality of cities, Portmore is the first and only one, and the municipality of towns, which never happened. So we have two categories of municipalities. In terms of wins, the JLP won six and the PNP won five. The one that is a Consider the greatest prize is the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation involved in the parishes of Kingston and St. Andrew, amalgamated. Now, there is a law, ROPA, as to how you break that tie and who should lead that corporation. And that has been determined in all the instances where there have been ties that the party that has the greatest majority of votes will elect the mayor and the party with the second less will elect the deputy mayor. So if you come down now to how many corporations the JLP is leading, it is six. How many corporations the PNP is leading, it is six, right? So that has been fairly firmly established. Now it's how you want to interpret it. All of you watch football. You will know at the end of the day, the league is not determined by who win a match, but who accumulates the most points. So you can actually lose a match to the team and you still come first, the team that is second, because you've accumulated more points. In the case of the Kingston and St. Andrew, the PNP was about 16,000 more votes than the Jamaica Liberal Party. Now, the final magisterial recount took place yesterday, and the PNP won back the Kintai division by 30 votes. So the swearing in of the mayor, Andrew Swaby, will take place on Tuesday. It will be structurally a shared leadership, which is how leadership should go, whether structurally or politically. But in this case, the JLP would have the deputy mayor. But the tiebreaker will always be with the mayor because the mayor has a casting vote. So if there was a vote in the chamber of 2020, the mayor as chairman of the council has the casting vote. So that is how it operates. Now, moving on, politically, the PNP would have won on the other two accounts. There are 228 municipal divisions in Jamaica and one elected mayor. So the PNP would have won the one elected mayor for Portmore the PNP would have won the majority of municipal divisions, moving from 98 to 115, meaning that the JLP won 113. They lost 17 divisions to the PNP. Or if you want to, the PNP won 17 divisions from the JLP. The PNP lost none of its councils to the JLP, but the JLP lost St. Mary to the People's National Party. And the PNP had 20,000 plus more votes than the JLP in total. When you total all the votes, the PNP would have had 20,000, little bit plus more than the JLP. So when you look at the total picture, how many corporations both parties lead? Six, six. How many divisions, who won more divisions? The PNP. Who won the majority vote? The PNP. Who won the one elected mayoral position? The PNP. So you can do your analysis however you want to and come to your conclusion. 
the conclusion of the People's National Party, with all the resources the government spent, with all the resources the Jamaica Labour Party had at its disposal, the PNP won the majority of divisions, won the majority of votes, and tied with municipal corporations, and won the Portmore mayorship. So you can look at that in context and decide what is the final outcome. And that's it in a nutshell. Welcome, Ratigan. Uh, question for Mr. Burr? Yeah, I, I, yes. I, want, I, I want to start with um, <clears throat> looking at what you just explained, Paul. Um, and I'm glad that is a person like you right here because you you I have confidence can best explain this um the first thing is that we talk about popular vote and we talk about number of municip municipalities that determine um the, the the outcome of the election where does the popular votes sit in terms of municipalities is it is it a matter of the um the popular votes counted within each municipality or is it a, a matter of the popular votes overall and and there is another factor that determines the victor of the municipality well the victor is left because there's nothing in the law that says one wins because of this i am saying to you that the popular vote does not determine who wins the corporation. In 2020, the PMP still had the popular vote in the KSAMC by over 15,000, about 12,000, if I remember. But eventually, the PMP lost the Raytown division by one vote. So the Raytown division, which was a tiebreaker, was awarded to the Jamaican Red Party, making them win 21 divisions in the KSAMC and the PMP winning 19. So in that case, the popular vote was not a factor. The popular vote is only a factor in those parishes where there can be a tie. And in every other parish, unless an independent wins, it is only the KSAMC, St. Thomas that has 10, Clarendon that has 22, all the other parishes, to the best of my memory, have an odd number. So Portland has nine. St. Saint, Saint Anne has 14, I believe. St. James, 17. Hanover, seven. Oh, Westmoreland has 14. So you could have technically that time in Westmoreland. But most of the parishes have an odd number. So unless an independent wins, or independence win. It is normally the PNP or JLP wins. Now, this was a very close, close election. So there was a lot of anxiety to find out who eventually won St. Thomas, because there's a magisterial recount. And the magisterial recount was in favor of the Jamaica Liberal Party, which gave them 6 4. The PNP lost the Landry Division by under 10 votes. So that was awarded to the parish corporation, which was awarded to the JLP. The PNP lost in on town. So it made the JLP have 13 to 11 and was awarded to them. And those were the other two in which there was contention. The, the time to count was not unusual. Right? It normally, you have more candidates in a local government election. So it's not 63 candidates you're counting for. And you also counted for independent candidates. You have 228 divisions. So naturally, even though less people may vote, you have to go through the process of counting each and every vote, counting how much unused votes, how much spoiled votes, how much rejected votes, and all that has to be recorded on a particular form and signed up. So it is a time-consuming process to complete the count for the local government election. But but the, more more directly to the to the point of um 
who elects the municipalities, right? If it's not about popular vote, is it a matter of delegates that determine? Um, Number of divisions you win, I think. It no, is in awesome. every, remember, you know, Patrick, and I know you have been away for a little while. There is always a voter's list for every single division in which there is renewal every six months. That means people coming of age at 18 can come on. People who have changed their mind and want to vote can come on. People who have changed their address can come on. In each division, the majority who wins, the majority of voters determine the outcome of a division. So it is done by the majority in each. So in all 40 divisions in Kingston, St. Andrew, the KSAMC, <clears throat> which is a candidate who got the most votes that was awarded the division. So in 20 divisions, the JLP candidate got the most votes. And in 20 divisions, the PNP candidate got the most votes. It's just that the PNP majorities were bigger. The winning majorities of the PNP candidates were on an average much bigger than the majorities that the majority that GLP candidates won by. And that is why the KSMC, without any contention, has gone to the People's National Party. So the so the, the follow-up question would be, and I'll just be with me a moment. I, I, I get you clearly now in terms of the divisions and and and, um, and so on. But what percentage of the electorate actually voted? Okay. So in 2020, it was 30 point something. In this election, and the final figures are not finished, is 29. The electorate, you have to understand, is everybody on the voters list, including mm -hmm. people who are abroad. Because I have many friends who are abroad, one or two came back to vote, including people who have died. Because you can't just take somebody off the voters list. Because there are many people, I know four Paul Burks in Jamaica, of which I am one, right? So if a Paul Burke dies, you can't just, somebody can't just go and say Paul Burke dead and take him off the voters list. There's a process, they have to look at the age, the RGB, and that can take a year or two. Notwithstanding that, the EOJ is, should have done from 2014 a re-verification process. Some people estimate that you have as much or more as 500,000 Jamaicans either not living here or have passed on who are on the list. Now, let me make something clear to you. Even if you go abroad and you are Jamaican and you have a plan to return, your name cannot just be removed off the list like that. When I moved in to a house years ago on Gallery Way, this is about about 2002, 2000, and no, about 2004, 2005. I saw on the voters list a set of names of people who used to live there. Their names are still, after 20, near 20 years, still on the voters list for the address that I lived at, at Gallery. Their names are still on that voters list for that very same address. So the list has to be cleaned up, but you can't remove a Jamaican from the list outside of a re-verification process where you say you have six months to re-verify and you don't re-verify this time, you have another six months and it goes on, you come back, show an address. And I can tell you in my own group of political group, I have 11 members who live abroad in my group, PNP group that I belong to. I have 11 members that live abroad. None of them came back to vote. So we have that problem and it affects the JLP, PNP. When we did our 
walking on through the communities. And I personally, for the first time in years, went back out and canvassed. Johnson Avenue in Rollington Town, Oliver Road, up in Warica Hills, Rearham Road, Tiverton Road, Homestead Road. The amount of people that no longer live at the address in knock at people's houses. And you say, hi. Hi, Mr. McCarthy. And we talk to you. And we say, oh, we say, so and so also living there. And so that person never lived here from time I hear. Then people don't live here again. That man gone abroad, that one dead. We don't know where to find that one. And it is not a small number. But having said that, many Jamaicans still, and people tell me this, I won't deny it, that they're not seeing a better under PNP or GLP. Some people say, no, they're coming out to vote when it is to change a government. People told us that too. Right? But a number of people, and we try to convince some, we won some over. And we fail to win some others over in speaking to them. They must see no reason why they should vote. Look at the state of them road, this, that. Some of these things have nothing to do with local government, but they're still whole elected representatives responsible. And even though the PNP has been out of office for eight years, many of them still hold their PNP representatives responsible. Here's an example. We have some roads in Rollington Town that were not fixed for 15 years. So we can't say the people, why is because JLP in office? These roads have not been fixed. But the truth is, the money the councillor gets, and we try to explain to people when you can only fix two roads in a community. Because in Norman Gardens, where I'm familiar with, you have Bayshore, which is on a hill, and every rain comes. It's a problem. You really need to put in the money to put in the drains, find the money to put in the drains. But that's another major cost. So what you do is patch roads, short-term solution. We have the Rockford side, we have the Red Clark side, we have the Burger community, we have the Rollington Town side. When you give a councillor six million a year to fix roads, that is two or three roads, when literally you have 70 or 80 roads in Norman Gardens. So we have a real challenge with resources and people feeling that their lives and their communities are not being significantly improved. Does the... I want to come back to you that question on that, but... I will allow you know others to jump into the question, but I really want to come back to you with a question pertaining to the policies. So what's, what's the um, general attitude of the party to this election? Does, does the party see this as underperformance or the party is satisfied with its performance in this election? Under the circumstances, knowing the resources, and this is not political propaganda. We, when we had the last local government election, the PMP had 29 MPs. Let me tell you this. This no. time you are down to 14. And most of the government resources are no longer being channeled through the municipal corporation. They are quite cleverly, politically, understandably, channeling the resources through the MPs. And this has come shortly after a massive Christmas expenditure program, right? And a government in office. And this was sold as PNP, so it's not a complaint. A government in office is always able to attract more contributions from individuals, right? So you can't compete in when you go and look for resources. But there is a bigger problem there is a bigger problem that I will tell you, many grassroots candidates, somebody who is a teacher, somebody who is a nurse, would have, have it difficult to win a marginal division without having a big, big, powerful sponsor. The contradiction is skin tire, which showed in that case that people power beat money power. 
But unless you put in a political organization, have a candidate that really is among the people, for the people, with the people, money power is going to trump uh, people power, people power, in my view, in most instances. The candidate who has the most money. John Anderson did a poll in 2016, can be found, where in the younger demographics, many people said they would sell their vote. Blatantly, openly, unapologetically. Right? And we know it is happening. Now, I belong to old school. I've heard the discussion. We can't buy people vote. I just can't do it. Right? I can reason a man. I can help a man with legitimate and have the resources, but it's not to vote. We can't go to somebody and say, I pay you to vote PNP. Unfortunately, there are some in my party who have succumbed to that practice, right? And they are a minority, but it happens because they feel it's the only way to deal with what the GLP is doing. So when bogus voting was going on, PNP would say, well, if we don't do it, GLP, I will do it. And GLP would say, if we don't do it, PNP, I will do it. But I will tell you, honestly and truthfully, it's a central part of the GLP's organization and mobilization strategy to give inducements for votes. And I'm not saying that individuals in the PNP are not guilty, but it's not part of the PNP's central strategy. It is not part of a program by the leadership of the PNP. But it is a major problem facing democracy in both local and central government election. John. Yes, um, I'm going back to something you said earlier. When you were here last, you, I didn't hear the whole presentation. I came late. But one of the things that I am particularly interested in is the mood of the people so notwithstanding all the efficient the, the inefficiencies of the voter of the vote count would you say that the 29 percent turnout which i understood you to be the of the of the, the total percent of those who can vote and it compared, you said, 30% of in the last go local government. How does that rank overall in local government turnout? Isn't that about what the, 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 the local government turnout is? Or is it lower, higher? Um, and secondly, what is the general turnout for the, uh, for the general election comparably? All right, so the last general election, 2020, was an anomaly. So we don't use that as figures. But local government election is always, has always been a lower turnout than a general election for obvious reasons. Right. Yes. One is changing a the government. There's more vigorous campaign, et cetera, et cetera. So... Paul, Paul hold a minute. John, can you fix your camera? We're not seeing you... Well, you don't yes, need to yes. say, man. Yeah, man. But what I will say, still too large a number of Jamaicans were disinterested. That is a fact. Still too large, a significant chunk of Jamaicans had no interest in participating. Were not interested. Local government elections is, is mainly the base of both parties. My own opinion without any scientific, PNP was able to energize its base fully and totally, right? I don't think we did enough to win over the undecided voter. I believe we won more of that group who were originally undecided towards the PNP I also believe that Prime Minister Andrew Holness did a lot to neutralize the undecided voters. In the three weeks 
he made one or two mega promises every single day, right? And these were extensively carried in mainstream media on social media. How much houses were built, how much jobs were to be provided, which markets were to be repaired, how many roads were repaired, who will get water, and he was very effective. And my own view, a lot of people who would have been dissatisfied and who might have come out the undecided voter who was dissatisfied, he provided some hope. And they stayed home rather than coming out and voting for the PNP. But I, of, the, of that block of non-committed, excuse me, non-committed party voter, the PNP would have won the larger slice, but not convincing enough because had the PNP won that block convincingly enough, they would have won far more corporations in Jamaica. And there'd be no discussion or debate as to who won the local government elections. Ratikan, let's have a question for Brother Paul. Yes. Uh, good evening, Mr. Burke. Good evening, panelists. Good evening. Ratigan, you can um, call me Paul, you know. You don't have to go with the mister, you know. No respect is due. So unless you tell me, say, well, you know, I can't call you Paul, I can't do that, you know. Um, yeah, good evening, uh, listening, viewing audience. You know, it shouldn't be that difficult to determine a winner. Um, because it's it's the party with the most votes, right? Or the most division wins. But in this election, I found it to be rather strange because in a general election, it's 63. So you know, once the votes are counted, you know exactly who's gonna, you know, who's the winner. In this case, though, um, you, 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 what I saw, I saw the, 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 JLP, um, the JLP claiming the win, but the PNP celebrating the win. And for much of my peers, we were confused. We were like, who won? And it, it dawned on me that, wait a minute, a local election is not necessarily a necessarily about winning it's about governance it's about who going to deal with the local politics as opposed to a general election where you're talking about leadership now and based on everything that i've seen and what you've said it would seem to suggest to me that we need to we need to uh revamp the system we need to look at it because the system that we have i don't think it it has been it has been um amended for quite some time and i think there's much confusion and also you mentioned Roper about people who you live overseas and you can come and vote. And then you mentioned about the list taking some time to adjust to the realities on the ground because people die, people move, and somehow it's not updated. And then I, I looked at the Roper. I have it up right now. And, and Section 5 and Section 5, Subsection 2 and 2A and Schedule 8 if you read those two, they give the impression that you must be, and they use the term, ordinarily resident, right? Uh, because otherwise they said, you can't vote. Now, Section 52A refers to a vote. No, I want to correct you. One sure. moment. You can vote once you're on the list, but you should not be on the list if you are not ordinarily resident in Jamaica. But there has been no final determination as to what ordinary is it six months a year is it seven months a year is it visits to jamaica what makes you ordinary if i've in the last five years if i've spent three years in jamaica but been out of jamaica for two years how do you determine how i'm ordinary and that was discussed at the ecj at length when we were to do the reverification process Sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to correct that. No, 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 no. Uh, that's fine. You said that if you're on the list, you can vote. Well, ROPA Section 5, um, subsection 2, says that, it, and I can read it. It says, every person shall be entitled to vote at an election of a member of the House of Representatives for any constituency if his name appears upon the official list. And then it goes on to say, unless. So if your name appears on the list, you can vote unless and here's the unless unless you cease to be a commonwealth citizen 
or cease to be an ordinarily resident in Jamaica. Those are the two exceptions. So if your name appears on the list, you can vote. But if your name appears on the list and you're no longer a Commonwealth citizen or you're no longer ordinarily resident, you cannot vote. That's voter fraud. And this is for MP. Schedule 8 talks about local election. And it mirrors this. It says, if you're not ordinarily resident, then you can't vote. But I'll take it a step further. It defines ordinarily resident. And it says, essentially, it's the place where you sleep. It so, defines it in Schedule 8. In Schedule 8, it defines it. So, and, and, Go ahead, I'm listening to you. So, Rafigan, the question came up, you see. Our might have three different houses and sleep at three different places, right? How can you tell him he cannot register in West Milan? But he have a girlfriend in West Milan, another lady in Trelawney, and one in Kingston, right? How can you tell him where he's resident? Nobody's name has been removed from 2006 who lives overseas. Not one person. The last verification process ended in June 2006. We are talking 18 years now. That anybody who registered, plus remember since that time, other people have come, right? When I was in Ghana last year, I met a number of Jamaicans who were still, some of them said, well, I will come back for the general election, you know. I said, you on the voter system? He said, yes. But them living and residing in Ghana, that is their home. But they told me that once an election call, they will come back to vote. Well, the names, they, they cannot take their names out. Well, therein lies the problem, because if they start enforcing ROPA, People, you, you're, going, you're going to have to convict some people of election fraud. I'll read you what it says about ordinary resident. And this is in section, this is in the first schedule, right? It defines ordinary resident. And it says one of the def definitions is the place of ordinary residence of a person is generally that place which has always been or which he has adopted. So he can only choose one the place of his habitation or home, whereof, when away from there, he, he intends to return. Specifically, when a person usually sleeps in one place and has his meals or is employed in another place, the place of his ordinary residence is where the person sleeps. Yeah, it is defined. Oh, if you live in America, I'm sorry, go ahead. It is defined. But how do you show? You go to a man's passport for everybody to show that he is in America more than Jamaica? Here is where, here's, here's how you solve the problem. The EOJ has been lax in it's 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 uh, responsibility to keep the list updated as you know they do it twice a year right they're supposed to go and do it twice a year they used to do the enumeration bit where they go house to house they used to do it every two years and they said no we're going to keep the list updated every 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 six months right so now if if they're doing and one of the things is residence verification and if you're verifying, maybe they don't have enough personnel. Maybe that's where some of the money should be spent. Because if you want to keep that list pure and beyond uh, attack, then you have to go out and do your due diligence. You have to go out and make sure that people who are dead, they're stricken from the list. You have to go out and make sure people who don't live there, they're stricken from the list. But as long as we keep doing this, and then you mentioned that it takes a while to get this done. There therein lies a flaw in the system and so what i'm advocating is that we need to put more people on the on the on the payroll for eoj so that they can go out and do whatever is necessary because otherwise you're going to have election fraud Ratigan, you are absolutely correct but let me just tell you very quickly and i won't waste time with this in 2014 both political parties, as an ECJ commissioner, agreed to the re-verification. The law says that when you complete, it has to be completed in all 63 constituencies, and it takes place after the next election. So you could start a re-verification now, tomorrow, but you could not change the list, take anybody up until the election after. 
when the GLP won, and this is ECJ minutes, the GLP in 2016 says, we don't think is a proper spend to spend $2 billion to do the, that's what was estimated to the cost. So use $2 billion to do the re-verification. Although both parties had agreed, the GLP raised some legal issues which are real about this ordinary resident situation. And there are conflicting legal opinions about it. But you are correct. The list needs to be clean. That is how I conclude that. However, well, well, it needs I, to be I, clean. I, I don't want you to move from that point, Paul. And um, two things I wanted you to take into account. Patrick, Patrick. Uh, based on what Patrick, Ratigan just said. Patrick, just a minute. Ratigan, you finish? I'll yield to my learned colleague, Patrick why, McCarthy. Why, Patrick? <laughs> yeah. Based on what, based on what Ratigan just explained, right? And looking at the culture, right? The culture of Jamaica. And in fact, I want to say even further, the culture here as well, because that is that is also a problem even here in the US, right? What happens a lot of time is that the culture is that usually the, the place that a person will first get registered to vote is probably the place where they grew up, where they're living at the, at the current time, right? Like, for example, with me, right, my, my place would have been in the home where I grew up, right, with my parents and all of that, right? And with all the other places that I live afterwards, I never, ever change anything, right? And if election come and, and I need to vote, and I'll go back and, and, and vote in my in my um in my original reg residence. Now it makes the whole matter of um ordinary residence, right? It disqualifies that because what happens is that people don't go around changing their addresses at random, right? They try to stick to the one address, right? That's one thing. The other thing is that in recognizing that, one of the things that has been looked at in terms of having an authentic voters list is to look at um, structuring the voters list around um, what you call it, the census, right? And that way you have something that is more authentic because that, is, that way you have, you have where, you, you, where you actually um, register a person to vote at the same time when you're counting heads. Right, so you have you 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 know the person who is attached to the the um the voter registration, right? So so it's 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 a factor which is not like you said it's not easy to discard people on on, on the um, voters list because of you know debt or anything like that because you just don't know you don't know if out of the four Paul Burks if it's really four or if it's two or it's just one. Right in, in 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 four places. So this is what I wanted you to um to, to comment on. Oh, Paul. Yeah, um. I didn't I didn't get a chance to finish. I had another question for Paul. I don't know how long we're going to be here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I, I wanted to know, step back a little from the law. Right, I know you're a man out there with long years. So, what three things would you recommend to improve the participation of the people in local government elections? Okay. What are the three big things? I mean, if the law is one, you know, we can talk about, we can mention it, but. You mentioned something about Kintyre, which draw, which draw my attention, where apparently there is some relationship to money and people, and I don't really know the details, but I would be interested to know what three things would you change to get more participation in local government? Well, I really believe that Jamaica needs not just the PNP, a new politics. And we use this word very glibly and it sounds nice. But really, Michael Mandel called it the politics of participation. Some people call it the politics of inclusion. For that to happen, 
there has to be a structured relationship between legitimate community organizations, like what was thought to have been the community councils in the 1970s, where a council has the right to summon, in a certain amount of days, uh, their representative to turn up to explain what is happening or what is not happening. Any day that legitimate community organization has that right to summon their representative within a reasonable amount of time, can't summon them today and want them to come tomorrow. But they must within a, whether it's a 30 day or 60 day period, with three dates given to them by the Council of Possible Convenient Dates, they must turn up. Secondly, People have a right for timely information. You're appearing on a road in my community. I want to know what is the cost, what is the scope of work. I want to know how the money that has been awarded to my division has been spent. It doesn't mean that the council, the council doesn't get money in their pocket. But I don't think even with our councillors in the PMP, we only explain mainly to our party members and very little of that information goes further. There has to be whether all councils are required to have a website, whether it's put up by the government of Jamaica, the local government authority, it is verified, it is posted. And the final big thing, the political parties have work to do. The political parties, if they believe in local government, have to convince more than their supporters, but the wider population, that this makes a difference in your life. It makes a difference to whether your roads are clean. For example, many people in Jamaica, one of the greatest criticism against the corporations and the councillors is garbage. The councillors don't have any responsibility for the collection of garbage in Jamaica. That was removed from the 1980s. But Jamaican people still hold councillors responsible for the non-collection of garbage when it is a National Solid Waste Management Authority that has full and total responsibility. I see my council after we calling them and begging them to collect garbage. But people are blaming the councillor. Yet the councillor is literally begging them, when is a garbage truck coming to collect the garbage in this community? So we have real problems, structural problems, political problems to deal if we want to fix local government. The PMP's manifesto is a start, right, in terms of change. But unless you really have legal empowered community councils, and Mikey, I want to ask permission just to speak for about three minutes. What killed community council? Ripton McPherson. <laughs> no, 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 it went further than that. Okay, go ahead. So, so the first conference of community councils was held at Twickenham Park. Yeah. It ran. People yeah. were excited. Yes. People were enthused. What year was that? That would have been 1977 or 78. 77. But, it, 77. but the second one was held in 1979 at Oceana Hotel. We couldn't, we never had space. We had to put people up at the pickup. We just never had space. When you read through that book, I'm going to scan it and look at what communities were discussing technology, community enterprise organization, employment. It, it was not about PNP or GLP, it had brought PNP and GLP people in one forum to deal with community development. Then there was that NEC meeting. And let me tell you how the main parts of that discussion went. Roy McGann got up in that NEC meeting and said that the chairman of the Maryland Community Council is a laborite, <laughs> right? And do you want that labor rights are the one who start determining how bushing is given out? And people say, no, 
do you want labor right to be the one to determine? And Russian Thompson was there defending him. And PNP MPs, there's a word, there's a four letter word. They don't like it divestment or devolution. They don't like those words, right? And they saw the, the Bula give out work this being a consultative process. But the bill actually went to Parliament, a bill to enact community council. It went to Parliament in just the same day Parliament was being paroled, a bill to enact community councils. And of course, as Asiago was saying, this was the Committee for the Defense of the Revolution, the CDR, that was, took place in Cuba, that the PMP was building. The CEOs had started the community enterprise organized, goat farms, supermarket, garage, all those were destroyed after the election. And unfortunately, PNP in winning in 1989 under Michael Manley dropped the agenda of community councils, dropped the agenda of worker participation, and many of those things that were not any radical socialist reforms, just democratic opportunities for inclusion, right? The, the student councils could not be turned back, but they eventually took off the auxiliary staff from the student councils and the students themselves are not invited to many of them and there's no penalization. When I became chairman of Winner Road Primary Junior High School, I had to ask, where are the student reps? They said, I'm discussing sensitive matters, teachers, this, that. <laughs> but so there has been a reversal and there is no inclusion job or very little. If you are not in the party, that has won the division. And in that inner circle, the wider public is not included in the decision-making process, not even proper consultation. Paul, some of us look at the low turnout and wonder if our democracy is in trouble. As a result, we feel that proportional representation would be a good model to encourage greater participation, greater representation. I don't mind hearing you, your voice, get your views on that. Proportional representation, changing from what we have now to one that is more inclusive. Do you I think don't know if it's more inclusive, but I believe in it. Even, even the Senate will be proportionally elected. Because it is the only way third parties are going to get into that crack to be able to have a representative. So theoretically, a third party could get 2,000 votes in every constituency now. That will be over 120,000 votes. But 2,000 votes can't win your constituency. That means there are 120,000 Jamaicans who have voted for you. But when you look at the House of Representatives, you don't have one person in there. That cannot be inclusion. That cannot be participation. That cannot be uh, democracy. So there has to be a proportional, um, a proportional platform to allow new parties and to give independent candidates some hope of making a difference in the political system. I'm well, fully for it. Historically, what you see in, in such cases in societies like Jamaica is that the farm alliances with the major parties and that actually just nullified the whole purpose of it. What, proportional well, representation? Yes. Uh, I, I I disagree. If no, I'm up, telling I'm telling you what 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 has happened across I, the world. Yeah, but if you look right? at what, nothing happening in Jamaica is unique, you know. Nothing you see happening in Jamaica is unique to Jamaica. And I'm saying to you that when it comes to those ideas, what usually results is that um, 
the farm alliances with the major party because that is what give still give them the voice because without that they couldn't they couldn't for example bring a bill to the floor right and have it go anywhere right well, without I without without think, alliances i don't think that because they have no chance of representation because there's not proportional representation they are being excluded although theoretically they could no no, no i'm not saying they should be no I'm, that's not what i'm saying though that's no, not what I'm, I'm saying. saying. I'm just saying that, you know, the, the, the practice, what the practice has been. Mm -hmm. Patrick, if both parties won 29 constituencies, which would make 58, right? Or one even won 30 and one won 29. I know that independent party with three or four. Obviously, they could not govern by themselves. They would not have a majority with four. They have to decide which of the two parties they're going to go in alliance with. It's either you go to the PNP that has 29 and that carries PNP up to 33 and leaves the JLP with 30, or you go with the JLP at 30 and that carries to 34 and leave PNP with 29, or vice versa. Whatever Absolutely. it is, if you win three or four constituencies and the two, the other seats are split almost equally, between the PMP and JLP, what are you going to do? Your four seats can't make you be prime minister. Absolutely. That's the point I'm making. You, you just explained the very point I just made. But that That's, is politics. That is Italy. Oh, yeah, but it's not it's not a solution. I'm saying that you real it was raised, Michael raised it in terms of um a proposal as a solution. And I'm saying that it's it, it's it's not a solution, it can never be a solution. Except right, for, them, for those very reasons. Except, Patrick, some of those third parties that won four seats, next time win 12, next time win 25, and they grow and they become major parties. Right? They become major parties. And it, it's hard, but it happens. But I'm just going with John. All I know, we have to search for the solutions to interest more Jamaicans to be part of the process. And part of it is not just a political problem, it's a structural problem. So not just to say that elected representatives are held accountable. That needs to be defined by law, right? That needs to be defined by law. What about the money? The, 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 the way that candidates would get money to, you know, to elect, to elect to elect themselves or the party to elect them. Can you say a little bit? You mentioned, um, where is that community? Kentile. You're not Kentile alone. Right. Increasingly since 2016, but before, uh, buying of votes has become a growing phenomenon. I was told by a policeman after there was a video showing people collecting money after they have voted. And I am told that the law says that that man cannot be arrested. If somebody after they have voted come and said, boy, I want a lunch money, you know. I need a bus fare. I came in from country to vote. I lose the, a day's work because I voted. And you decide to be generous and say, OK, here's 2000 for lunch money. But I take taxi to go back home. Here's another 2000 They say you lose your work and you lose your work. Here's 3000 And round up and give them 10000 That is not what I am told. I have not checked out the legal thing. Perhaps Rattigan can check that law. But I am checking. <laughs> it says that, listen to me, bar is not supposed, not supposed to be an election day, you know. I miss a bar open, you know. Right? And there's yet another thing. A lot of people who work are told that when they need them work, they now get paid. Right? And this happened again. And so they said to me, Why? Well, tell me, he can't afford to lose him their pay and make him boss angry then. So the government is going to have to decide 
whether workplaces outside of essential services have to lock at midday. Whether people go and vote and use the time is another thing. But people have to be given time off to vote. And a lot of people have that challenge. When you are a helper working at somebody's house, right? And you're accustomed to get your salary and you go to a person and the person probably see you come from a community that is not aligned with how you think you want to vote. You say this man, if you work half day, you know, you're only getting half day pay. You know. There are some economic realities that face people who are vulnerable. Correct. It might not be much, but it happens. And it happens far too much. So how you would that be overcome? I thought I King Sire was a good example. It seemed like it was a bad example when you mentioned <laughs> it. <laughs> no, but I can tell you, we had somebody coming in from West London to vote in Norman Gardens on election day. And we refunded the person their bus fare. That is a legitimate, open, transparent, ethical reimbursal. Nothing improper about it. Ratigan. Testing. To, all right. Um, on the rope on 91, if you're right, if the person if the person votes and then compensation or reimbursement is made, you're right. There is no crime of bribery. However, if it's communicated to the person that you come, you vote, and we'll reimburse you, that's a violation. So if there's a discussion before the voting, or they said during the voting process, then there certainly is a violation under Section 91. But let me let me let me go back. I remember to the, gun. the person who is having that discussion with you is not the person going to pay. You know. I come to you and say, Ratigan, we need a vote, you know. Right? We can do a thing for you, you know. Mm -hmm. We can give you five thousand or ten thousand. You and I have that discussion. But I'm not the person handing you any money, you know. Well, who would be guilty? The person making the offer. And the person making the payment. And, and by, by the way, again, and by the way, you have to be taking me. 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 And by the way, under section 91, I have to go look for it. the person who receives the money is also guilty of bribery. So the person because the person who gives it and the person who accepts it. But the problem in Jamaica, and I'm seeing it on I'm seeing it on a daily basis as I prepare for my program and programs like this program, is that we don't need we need to we need to revise and tweak uh, uh, you know some of the laws but the laws are there on the books the matter is enforcement that's the problem we don't enforce them and as a because we don't enforce them over time they're normalized we just accept them and just say i saw the thing go right <clears throat> but let me just ask you a quick question and it goes to proportional representation in the diaspora it's claimed that there are more people living outside of Jamaica than, than within the borders of Jamaica. A lot of them are eligible to vote. A lot of them are registered to vote. And when I say people, we're talking about um, Jamaicans and their progeny. So we're talking about um, uh, children and grandchildren. Do you think, based on the fact that you said, okay, you, you, you agree with proportional representation, that the folks living overseas, that they too should have a say as far as proportional representation is concerned in the government, only, governing and the government of... Hmm? Only those born in Jamaica, not children and grandchildren. There has to be a line drawn. If the well, child comes back and applies for Jamaican citizenship, right which he or she is entitled to as a son of a jamaican then yes but only jamaican citizens in other words many many people 
have Jamaican parents and they are eligible for Jamaican citizenship. Eligible, but they are not Jamaican citizens. So once I believe they should be allowed to vote if they have the interest in their country, they want to vote. Now, what people are afraid of is electronic voting. That is where our problem, right? How would they actually vote? How would the Jamaicans in Ghana vote? How would the Jamaicans in Thailand vote? How would the Jamaicans in Japan vote? What mechanism would ensure the integrity? Because we come from a history where it's a stuff ballot box and, and teeth ballot box. This is right. Jamaica. That, no. is, that is in fact the problem because what happens is that and, and, and this is something I say every week, right? When a system is flawed, there's no correcting it. There's no correcting the flawed system. It can only be changed, right? And therein is, lies the problem with Jamaica, right? The, the electoral system, right, is terribly flawed, terribly. And like you said, it also is compounded by an, a history of a of, of fraud right so you can't you can't there, there's no adjustments you can make to correct that you have to come up with a something new right something untried something where people can understand because that is that is the biggest thing that turned people off the fact that they don't understand anything about about the system itself right and they don't they don't they don't they, therefore they have no confidence in it Right? They don't think the vote matter. That's the problem. Patrick, no, just, I just, disagree just, with you. Just, I disagree with you about terribly flawed. Let me tell you why. When you go on the voters list in Jamaica, there are representatives of any party who wants to go. But certainly two political parties are paid to go to the point where you live and make sure you are there. An ID is given to you. When you go into the voting station with or without an ID, the agents, all the candidates, get what they call a picture list. So even if you don't have your ID, they get this picture list. Then there's what they, I don't know why they call it a black book, but it's really a data book where the presenter, like your brother can resemble, can ask you, what is your date of birth, where you're born, what is your occupation, all of that. So the bogus voting has been, let me tell you, has been really eliminated. I mean, somebody can, a big 8, 17 year old can go in at age 17 and say, I want to vote. And they don't ask him for his birth certificate or ask her for a birth certificate and get on the voters list before they reach 18. That is really the only flaw that takes place. The flaw we're talking about is once you're on the voters list, how do you clean the voters list? That is where the system is flawed. The bogus voting has cut out, you know. That is why you have 29%, you know, because there's bogus voting. I can tell you, you'll be going at 60%. No more voter ballot boxes are being voted out 100%. So you just confirm what I said. You just confirm what you said because you, you, Patrick, you just Patrick, explained. Patrick, Patrick, allow him to finish, please. Patrick, what I'm saying, there are flaws, but when you start up and say terrible flaw, the, the Big problem is how you get to keep a clean voters list. Rattagon has read the rules. Part of it is enforcement. Um, people come back and if, you, if your name goes off the list and you come back to Jamaica and you will say, I am coming back to live in Jamaica. I'm a Jamaican and this is where I live. They have to, by law, put you back on the list you cannot deny any of you come back home right now who are not on the list and say i have come back to live in you don't have to even tell them that you don't have to tell them that they're going to take your fingerprints 
and for your fingerprints don't match anywhere else in the island. Right? You go on the voters list. So no. the floor is not, we have one of the better systems in the world. One of the better systems. Because when people come to vote, we know you can't come and vote in the name Paul Burke. First of all, there's a PNP and GLP indoor agent, and there's an independent candidate that independent candidate has the list to and look. Many times these people are from the exact community. They know people by face and name, right? Many times. Because we would not use you as an indoor agent. We get somebody who lives in Renock Lodge to be the indoor agent for that box in Renock Lodge. Somebody who knows the people, generally most of the people. We have the list, we canvassed the form. And if, if the system was flawed, I am saying to you, you would have 50 to 55, 60 to 65 percent turning out to vote in the last election. But Jamaican people are afraid to put in bogus vote if they can get away with it. Ratigan, you, before Patrick interrupt you, you were making a point. You want to continue? Yeah, well, I was saying that you get Jamaican citizenship citizenship through three, three ways, marriage, descent, and birth. Now, Paul is right that you have to register. You're eligible to become a citizen. You have to register. You have to apply uh, if you are trying to acquire citizenship through descent or through marriage. But birth, it's self-explanatory. You have your birth certificate, and that's that. So... I was going to take the point a bit further because I'm arguing on behalf of the diaspora and I'm saying, listen, I think it's a disenfranchisement of one's right to vote if 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 there is no... I'm not, sorry, can you repeat that? Please. You think with, it is... Oh, a disenfranchisement of one's right to vote if there's no mechanism in place for one who lives abroad to vote abroad. What that means, if you don't have the plain fear and whatever else is required, you know, um, to the... the, the I'm going to close my window. Spotify. One second. One second. Continue, continue, Ratiga. Yeah, I, I don't well, yeah, yes, to... yes, to hear from Paul as the year. Sorry about that. Right. Uh, no, 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 no worries. Neighbor was what, going along. Right. So what I'm saying is that if, if, if you don't have a mechanism in place, for people overseas to vote and you're going to require them if they're if they're duly registered and you say okay if you want to vote you have to come back home to vote now if somebody lives in japan for example i mean it's 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 it's, it's not impossible but it's a financial hardship for them to travel all the way from there to come to jamaica to cast a vote now the both the pnp and the jlp promised the diaspora that they would implement mechanisms to allow voting overseas. And I've I've tracked this back all the way to um, Delano, what's his last name? Franklin. Um, Franklin. Yes. Yeah, he was asked about it, and he was said the time is not right. This is 2007. And he was saying, well, the time is not right, but I can foresee sometime in the future where, you know, it's something that we should take up. Since then, both parties have promised the diaspora that, that, that this will take place. As recently as December 2022, the Prime Minister said, yes, Jamaicans living overseas should be able to cast a constituent vote. But we still don't see that mechanism in place. And we're still being disenfranchised. What, as, as a member of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, the opposition, and a senior member at that, what is the opposition's plan to ensure that that promise is fulfilled and that people can actually vote from overseas. Ratigan, I have never been a member of the opposition. I'm a member of the People's National Party. All right, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. No, I know, I know, I'm teasing, but I'm not in the <laughs> opposition. Never wanted to be in parliament throughout all my life. Never had that, that aspiration, ambition, inclination, desire ever to be in parliament. So I'm not in the opposition. I'm a, I'm not a part of the PNP's leadership. I may be a senior member of the party by age and by service, but I'm not a part of all of my life member of the National Executive Council. 
right? First of all, I agree with you. It has to make it happen. It should not, we should not have passed 60th year of our independence. I believe there can be a threshold that in any place where a thousand Jamaicans reside, right? Obviously, you can't have a station open up where you only have five Jamaicans live. Maybe 500, right? Because in there, you can find PNP, JLP, and independent people to be agents on behalf of party and candidates, just as in Jamaica, right? Now, the PNP has gone a step further. Last year at our conference, 2023, we approved the diaspora as a region. So we now have seven regions. And the regions are now in zone. There is a North American zone, a European zone, a Caribbean zone, an Africa zone. And the diaspora had a problem because to become a member of the party, you have to be registered to be able to vote in Jamaica. And they complain that men and them are Jamaicans. They visit Jamaica. They send money to Jamaica. They have family in Jamaica but they are not registered voters. And the PNP waived that for anybody who is living abroad, who, who is there with residential status, right? In other words, and unfortunately, undocumented Jamaicans live in the United States at this time to join the diaspora of the PNP. Right? Mm -hmm. Neither that might be another problem. Would they be allowed to vote if they if they are there on a visa and stay in there and doing what not as a student visa, yes. If they are there on what they call the green card citizenship. I don't know. That was one of the issues. Right? Now, so should undocumented Jamaicans be allowed to vote, right? That I, I have never given it much thought. I am only saying that that was one of the issues that came up. I don't know how many Jamaicans are undocumented, but I know you have hundreds of thousands who are documented and they should not be denied the right to vote as to what is happening in Jamaica. The two one, quick, one quick point, Nita, and then I'll, I'll step off the stage. And for those of whom would say that you don't live in Jamaica and therefore you, you, don't, you don't pay taxes, you don't do this, you don't do that, and you don't do vote, I say to them, go and read the Constitution. Familiarize yourself with it. Because you will find an offensive provision in there. And that provision says... And, it, and the, 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 the electoral uh, commission, they confirm it, they agree with it because that's part of their regulations. It says, if you are a Commonwealth citizen, meaning that if you come from Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, wherever, and you come to Jamaica, let's say you come to Jamaica on a two-year contract. You just come to do some work and leave. One year after you're there, and one year you've established residence you are entitled to get on that voter registration list. You're entitled to vote. But here is something even, even worse or better than that. You can run in the elections for a seat in parliament. But a Jamaican who is a citizen of the United States has to surrender their U.S. life. There, there you go, right? But, but the Bangladesh I know somebody, to, but I know somebody is, very close to me to be able to go into the Senate. I do surrender her U.S. citizenship. And I knew of, and I'm not being racist, but I knew a white South African progressive living in Jamaica who would have been able to run for parliament, right, in Jamaica, not born in Jamaica, but would have been eligible to run in parliament. But a Jamaican born here would not be able it's part of the Mrs. Queen business, the Commonwealth stupidity. But, oh, it's still, 
and it's still in effect. And here is and I think both good. political parties agree, I believe, is what I heard, that it should go in the constitutional reform thing. I believe there's a an agreement going down the line by both political parties that once you take the oath in parliament to protect the constitution to serve the people of Jamaica, that is an oath that is important. Let me let me just give you one quick scenario. Like finish it up. Somebody from Sri Lanka, they come to Jamaica, two year contract. One year after living in Jamaica, they get on the voter registration rolls and then they can vote. Now that person, the two year, the, 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 the registration card is good for 10 years, I've been told. And so now they go back to their country, right? They go back to Sri Lanka, no connection to Jamaica, but let's just say that him just get a trip and him come to Jamaica. And it just happens that there's an election, right? Him not come for the election, you know. Him just come for visit our friend or whatever. My friend said, vote. "Come vote, man. Come vote." Yeah, him can vote. Meanwhile, we can't vote. So, so yeah, people, so people who would say, people would, people who would, who would oppose the things I'm saying, I'm saying to them, you have every right to oppose, and I respect your right to oppose, but oppose me intelligently. Go and read the Constitution. Go and read Roper, and then we can sit down and have an intelligent. Because otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's just emotional. So that's my yeah. piece. I, I, so, find it, I find it rather strange that someone from Sri Lanka can vote. But a Jamaican who is labeled as undocumented in the American system cannot vote. You know, well, no Jamaican in the American system can vote. Unless they are U.S. citizen, or so, but no, I'm just vote, saying, vote in the Jamaican election. You're yeah, saying, I'm just that... saying, I'm just saying, Michael. Yeah. Let us accept the principle that sooner rather than later, immediately, without any contention, that all Jamaicans, however they have got their citizenship, born in Jamaica or they have come back to Jamaica, or they have to come back to Jamaica. They have applied for their citizenship and therefore hold Jamaican citizenship entitled to a Jamaican passport should be allowed to vote. Full stop. Full the stop. question is, right, those that are undocumented, who theoretically are in the United States or whichever other country, illegally right should they be allowed to vote that i'm not going to debate that here that was one of the questions that was raised i know in the discussion years ago right it was never resolved i'm just telling you that it was a question that was raised i want to shift the discussion to the leadership of the party mark goldie Going into the election, there were a lot of questions about him, his effectiveness. And from the result, one can say that the PNP is united around Mark Goley. So what, what is your take on that? Is it a fact that he has consolidated his leadership position in the PNP? And that, is, like that is what improved the result? I would like to say that Mark Golden has grown and he has grown onto a number of Jamaicans, including PNP people. Right? So that's the first factor. You will recall that his personal popularity has never been high. And he has done the work on the ground to make people get to know him. One or two slips here and there of things he maybe never needed to say. Within the PNP, there are three factors that have happened. One, there are those who supported him from the outset. Two, there are the people who accept the democratic outcome of the elections, whether or not they thought he was the best person to lead. And that group also supports him. But there's a third fraction, very small diminishing, but exists. Current classes. The current classes. Yeah, man. Very articulate, very vocal. Social media gives them 
tremendous capacity. Right? Their numbers have shrunk. Right? And they are still adamant that they believe that it better the PNP lose under Mark Golden, he should not be leader, they have their reasons, etc., etc., etc. But within that group, some of them have taken a decision that although they are opposed to Mark Golden, the PNP is the better of the two evils. Right? And the bigger evil for them is to get rid of the JLP. Not that they are supported. The thing that you people face with Biden and Trump, who is worse, right? That is what you face in the United States now. You can't be hugging up either of the two. Although Biden made, why well, he made a ratchet State of the Union speech and was forced to do his conciliation about 30,000 Palestinians being killed. Because him see what is happening in the world, him see the demographics, etc. So he gave away the goodies. But um, I think people have made up their mind that if there's a choice between Andrew Holness, most people in the PNP, certainly, I would say as much as 98, 99%, whether they like Mark Golden or not. And his support has increased tremendously. Don't get me wrong, but whether they like him or not, they want to see the back of the JLP. Question, feedback from so, the panel. So, mm -hmm. so, so Paul, tell me something. Um, is it a matter of that small percentage, right, um, at the centers? as you as you as one can call it right who don't necessarily support uh, the leadership or, or support um voting is it that they, they try to separate the policy from the person or is it a, a problem with the person themselves and not the policy there are, there are problem with the individual Right? I will tell you, some people have a problem with a white man to become prime minister in Jamaica. Some people have a problem, and I'm not playing on straight. Some people have a problem with Mark Golden, who is part of the financial sector, run on capitalist principles, being the president of a party that says it is democratic socialist. Right? There are some contradictions some people find and say, this man is not the right person to lead the PMP. Some of that group feel strongly that the risers contributed to worsening the case of the PMP. The what? In 2020. Worsening the no, position. No, the, the word you said before, risers. The, okay, people who were part of Rise United in 2019 are commonly called risers, right? They were a group that campaigned for Peter Bunting, right? There is a group, it's a smaller group diminishing. I don't think there are 100 people in the PNP, frankly. Some of them are not even members. I don't think they're number 100. When I look to count who are carrying the line, as we would say, articulating it, speaking to it, I don't think they're number 100, right? But many of them say this group of risers and the prominent risers were Peter Bunting, Mark Golden, Dayton Campbell, Angela Brown Burke. And they hold those four individuals responsible to varying degrees. Some people said they were the main cause. Some people said they were a significant cause. Some people said they contributed. No doubt in my own mind that the division of the party contributed to how badly the party did in 2020. Was it the main cause? In my view, absolutely not. But it was a contributory factor. People have their own analysis on this. 
their own passion, and people say that Mark Golden cannot be excused. Some people have gotten over it, some people can't get over it, whatever their views are. So the question then is, what next for the P to P P the PMP? That's well, the PNP has a vision and policy document, which is good in principle that they are now trying to establish what is a philosophical blueprint of a People's Party. People's Party is my terminology. It is, no, it is not where I would want it to be, but it is a step going in the right direction. I have had an issue with my colleagues for years in the PMP. As you know, I've never been a Marxist Leninist, but I'm certainly a Marxist influence thinker and is the most significant philosophy that guides my political thinking, right? And I mean, just going back, my first study group, which I led at 18 years old, down at ITA, and I remember the book. What um, is to be done? No, 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 no. One step, one step back, two step forward. One step forward, two, one one step forward, step forward two step back. Two step back. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So that is the whole Russian Socialist Democrat Labour Party debate between Lenin and Martov with Plekhanov as chairman, right? And I supported why Russia had to have a Marxist Leninist party and the dictatorial proletariat for Russia to succeed. Totally with that. PNP needs to speak honestly to the issue of race in Jamaica without promoting racism. And there's a confusion in many people. The fact is, that the people in the prisons, the people being left behind in the educational system, Black the people, people living below the poverty line, right? The people who are most vulnerable are Africans, Black Jamaicans, Africans. That is just an indisputable fact. So there must be a race issue after so many years of slavery. And of course, there are some people of Indian descent in that 20 percent but none of the other ethnic minorities are in that group not the chinese not the syrians not the white now to speak to these issues frankly is not to promote racism is to understand the context and issue of race in jamaica because you can't correct it if you don't have an appreciation of it how do you have positive affirmative action right in this situation, if you don't come to grips with a race issue. There is also a class issue, it is intertwined. You must speak to class. It doesn't mean that you're promoting class warfare, class hatred, or class conflict, but classes exist. You can't deny their existence. And if you want a solution for the people of Jamaica, you have to be honestly analytic about their problems. They can't just talk about but Jamaicans who are below the poverty line. Who are the Jamaicans below the poverty line? Africans. And we have to speak these truths in order to find solutions. But one would say that, one, listening to you, Paul, one, one possible reaction could be that you're talking from both sides of your mouth, because the People's National Party is led by a white Jamaican. But I don't have an issue with that. I don't have an issue with that. And I told people, I don't have an issue. I got over my racism many, 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 many years ago, because all of us went through the 60s and black poor and see the injustices of black people. Sometimes it is hard to keep straight but you know on principle. When I read Struggle for a Birthright in South Africa, I see the amount of communists who were killed, locked up, brutalized, fighting against apartheid. When I was in Angola, 
and we are opening the South African, the South African Conference with South Africa in November 1981. I'm at the Karl Marx Theater, and I hear that the Angolan Minister of Foreign Affairs is to open the conference. And I'm there waiting with my interpreter, right? Who incidentally was the daughter of Alexander Nato, Iranian. And I see this white man walk in. I thought he was the interpreter to interpret the English. Zuma. No man. Paula no, no. George. Paula George, Minister of Foreign And I said, oh, no, a white man. As in the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And she said, you need to know about him. In smuggled arm, in, in, in finance people, in high revolutionary, even in trenches with us, with them, with them AK. So I know that there are individuals who can escape them racism. I watched some other prime minister when they went into politics, marry black women, only when they went into politics. I watched a man who is a wealthy Jamaican marry a black woman nearly 30 years ago. And that's one of them high brown men that don't think themselves black. And you have many people with high brown complexion say they're not black, then brown. That has reversed now, you know, John. <laughs> right? We all knew we were black in the 60s and 70s. Right? That reversed now. Right? So I realize that he's a Democrat. Right? That's the first thing. And believe in democracy. He has certain ethics. Right? And we may not share the same ideological pace or platform, but he knows that's a fundamental change to the economic system to give all Jamaicans a fair chance. The PNP has his best. And I said this to you, John and Michael and, who are, and Leo, who I know very well, I know oh, Patrick. If I had said, as president, chairman of the WIO in 1978, that I'm willing to embrace social democracy as a transitional stage. I don't expel myself. You dare not, you could not dare say you are defending social democracy at that time. But social Openly. democracy. Openly. So, no, no, we never, we never defended social democracy. I want to be very clear. No, I'm saying you couldn't say it openly. We would not even say it at all because we did not believe in it. Mm. We were never believing in social democracy. We were very clear in the why. And the PNP, in its principal objectives, defined democratic socialism as distinct and different from social democracy. We were very clear at the 40th annual conference of the PNP that we were not following a route of social democracy. We were going along a route of a non-capitalist path of development. That was the route we were taking. So, so that was the definition for democratic socialists then? It was, and it is there in written form in the principles and objectives. It is there in writing in a secret document. But it, 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 it clearly does not um, distinguish itself from social democracy. It does. And I'm very clear about social democracy. Social democracy is primarily a capitalist economic system in which they take surpluses and make sure that the social things, education, health, housing, are factored. And that is good for industrialized first world countries with low population growth. Social democracy cannot work in third world countries where people have been dispossessed and disempowered for years. And fundamental issues have to be addressed. Gaddafi said he was social democ socialist democracy, um, social democracy, and um, and 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 he did it his way. That was one and of the that was one of the clear cases back then. I read the Green Book at that time, and I understood where Gaddafi was coming with his culture and his religion and what was possible in the context of a strong Muslim society. But not to get too much into that discussion, the other point I want to um, speak to is, you know, in terms of the, 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 the race, race factor. 
what do you say to what's happening in Jamaica now in terms of this new, this rising land baron class, which, which consists of a whole lot of black faces? Is a land baron class or are there some successful Jamaican black real estate developers? However you want to term them. Well, they're not a barra. A lot of people have been able to break into industries, um, owning small hotels, not a big five-star hotel, owning businesses, making them successful, um, buying land, <coughs> developing land, getting to real estate, and the business is done to make a profit. That is just an indispensable truth. But, but that's, a sim that's a simplistic explanation. The fact of the matter is that what's happening in Jamaica right now is that the whole matter of land is one which is very much, very much something that is being done in a, in a, in a, in a way that is not justified. Right? The whole matter of land distribution in Jamaica. Right? The land issue is a big, is a big question in Jamaica right now. Land distribution has ended has ended for the main part. That whole question is not just now. It's just not now. Uh, tracts of land are being sold behind people's back. Some people suspect, and I do so, that there are big kickbacks being given to the government official. I mean, corruption, and this has nothing to do with that there was all this corruption in the system. Don't fool yourself. But the level of corruption and teeth in his wrong, little teeth wrong, big teeth wrong, right? But big teeth stop money from going to basic school, fixed roads. I mean, yesterday, yesterday, I had to send 20,000 to a man in Palmas Hospital so he could buy back antibiotics. The hospital didn't have it. He's no longer an employee of mine, but he's a former employee. And the hospital don't have the antibiotics, and he needed it urgently. The, the healthcare system is another. You need to bring some doctors on to speak about the healthcare system. And until politicians go and use the public healthcare system, until politicians send them children to primary school, there's no fix. There's absolutely no fix. <clears throat> you don't want to get sick enough to go into the public healthcare system in Jamaica. Trust me. And at age 72, that's a concern of mine. I have no known, and I've seen that in that one with my 17 day. I have, I have no known illness, fortunately, but just you're healthy one day and next month you'll drop down. And it's a public health care system. I mean, one of our counselor candidates last year. And it shouldn't have to do with you know, contact. Was in hospital for two days on a chair. Couldn't get a bed at UW Hospital. Had to call somebody who knew somebody to get to our bed. The system shouldn't work so by who you know or who you are that you get a bed. So what is the problem? It, why, why is it the case where so UW is having a problem like this. You know, you made a system at a little while ago, Patrick. The whole system is not it's a flawed system. Healthcare is expensive. People are living longer. You have to pay nurses more, you have to pay doctors more. That's a debate of a point though. No, no, hold on, hold on. You have to pay doctors more, nurses more, technicians more. So you have to have out something in the system, whether it's a syntax on alcohol, whether it's of gambling, whether it's of whatever, to fund your healthcare system. Right? There are two systems that have to be funded, irrespective of your station in life. And that's your educational system, and that's your healthcare system. And the state has to find the ways and means, no matter how, 
that every child gets good early childhood education and nutrition, regardless. Because if you don't fix it then, you have the problem today. Where many youths, their solution is scamming, crime, antisocial activities, robbing, because you have not fixed the educational system. So is that if I only really know to fix the educational system as your number one priority, grow your economy, do your best with your health system, have children understand that the fast food stores need to pay tax. The Kentucky Fried Chicken and the Burger King and the them people need to pay a special tax. They are contributing to obesity, overweight, diabetes, hypertension, poor nutrition. What, what about I have a, the, I have a what, question, Mikey? Hold on, hold on. Just a minute. What about the cigarette and alcohol companies? That is sin. That's what they call the sin tax. The tax alcohol, the tax. I mean, alcohol, cigarette. those things that those things that contributes to one health going down. You have to tax them. Last yeah. Thing. yeah um, my, my question, Paul, is this. Considering the, the, the context of um, the local government election, right? Knowing that we have a general election coming up soon, what do you think that the, the, the PNP need to, well, considering that there's such a large um, population of voters out there that are uncommitted and not participating in the electoral process, I mean, do you think that there's anything that the PNP can do in terms of tweaking its 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 platform for the general elections to try and inspire some of these voters to come on board or to just to feel inspired to participate in the process and organizationally what do you think the pnp can do organizationally to get its platform out there and get feedback and get organization in place to bring out voters for the general elections? I'm not the best person to answer that question, right? But I have, I have some basic views. As I said, I'm not part of that PNP leadership team. So I can't just, speak. Just your I views. Can't. Just no, your views. I understand. But I believe we have to get back to ground politics much more. Social media is important but it is not a substitute to ground politics. It is complementary. It is the icing on the cake. You have to go back in the communities. It is difficult. And they're difficult for a number of reasons. You're going to have to hear people's personal problems when you're going to try and deal with community issues, right? Before a man tell you that the street light not working, I'm going to tell you the same of him light bill for pay, right? But there are people in the community who are interested in community development. And you have to find those people, make a connection with those people, and do what you can, no matter how little, to show your commitment and interest in the community. And yes, uh, you have to promote on social media. It is not, you're not doing it for the publicity, but, excuse me, there's another world of Jamaicans. If you don't see it on social media, it don't happen, right? So you have to cater to that group. More than that, you can't send me as a messenger to convince people to go to church. Come in and go to church. Some of our messengers are the wrong people as candidates. Unfortunately, there are too many of us who go into politics because we want a position, want to be a council, want to be an MP, for own self-aggrandizement, right? And some of our leaders really lack the capacity to go and have discourse, conversation, 
in the course of community, respectfully with people. And although they may not have your quote-unquote educational level, listen with them, hear them, understand why they believe what they believe, reason them, and get back that connection. We all used to do that groundwork at the youth club level in the community. But I will tell you, some communities are not going that night. I could feel safe in many TNT communities out there till one o'clock, two o'clock. You have unpredictable vibes. Me and a man do have nothing. When we stand up beside a man, talking to him, just meet the man for the first time, just talking to him, hearing him say, man, talk to me. A man pass by and he's not accurate. He just a fire whip a shot because it's automatic weapon. And man said, boy, sorry, name, wrong place, wrong time. I didn't even go parties in the communities at night again to bring back me. We buy a bottle of rum and send it. We buy a case of beer and send it. Come in and know when a corner. I used to sit down on the corner and play dummy. No, I don't do anything that yet. In these communities, Rockford is at peace again. How long, I don't know. Right? That's a community I relate to most of all. A community I love dearly. Right? I remember when the war was going on in Waterhouse. Right? Dealing with them time, the marshal and salesman and they managed to try to stop it, the amount of meetings we had. Right? When the war start fighting them, most of the people hurt are innocent civilians, you know, family members. So it's hard to talk about to stay on the ground at night and interact in some of these communities. Am I not doing it? I'm not asking somebody else to do what I'm not going to do. And many of our political groups, people don't want to leave them house at night when there's conflict. And when you build a group, you know, it takes you two years to build a group. And in one month, a group can mash down because of violence. You know. Two members get shot, this, that. Right? You're on the wrong side of the road. You belong to this side of the road. And the man them who don't fight belong to that side of the road too. So you mustn't come over this side of the road. Mm. And then it's not gold I'm fighting over here. It's not iron I'm fighting over. But they're my fight. Yeah. You call it fight? <laughs> they might kill one and another. <laughs> so so the question then is we need a new faculty of thinking to guide the work that necessary. And and John has an idea that what we need to be thinking or talking about is a manifesto, a working people manifesto in Jamaica. John, you want to say some more about that well, idea and how we can move forward on it? Yeah, I mean, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an idea, and I don't know that at 6 o'clock. No, we can't. Because, right. Um, but just introduce the idea so Paul can get them. Feel like and I'd love to get a copy of it. Yeah. Yeah, I can send you a copy. We have your email. Yes, yes. I have. You. I have that. You have it. The, oh, I think I saw it. You know, I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. Okay. Yeah, I can send it to you. It's it's just here's the concept. The concept is that the people are at a certain stage in the country. Um. Is a, it's a place where we have been before. And in order for things to really change, we have to go through, you, you have to jump in some pothole before you know, say, you have to get good tires. You have to walk the road and learn the experience. It's not going to come from no talking, etc. But it's inevitable if if a solution, if a re, if, let me put it this way, if some kind of 
uh, change does not occur, it's inevitable that another uh, up, upheaval, uh, another reorientation will take place in Jamaica. The manifesto is simply um, a set of words about all of the condition, all of the main condition that face the people in Jamaica. So it have education, it talk about community, women's rights, corruption, uh, etc. Along with the economic, some kind of economic. The purpose of that, the purpose of it is really to help agitate to arm people headspace that whatever wherever you are whether you're a parent you're a worker you are living in the community that you can embrace these things so long as they are things that speak to what you the ordinary people feel your issues posing uh i won't read out all of them but the idea i have a section here which, which says racial rights which is right to the point you make about blackness because uh one thing that the the bob marley movie bring out and all of us who live in long enough, especially me, I think I must be the oldest man in this group, that when I was a little boy, and up to today, if I come back to Jamaica tomorrow, and I walk into certain industry or I walk through certain areas of the city, I don't see the same color skin people like I might say in Waterhouse. You know, the poor, the zinc house still there. And the, 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 the floor, the, 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 where people walk in those community in the ghetto, some of them is just dirt, no toilet. So the purpose of this document really is an idea to help um, <clears throat> arm people regardless of where they are now. So we would we would try and put this together between us as well as involving some of the listeners. It, there's no it's a work in progress for for an extended time, but Technically, it's a, it's a manifesto, even though we don't have a party. But the idea is to help mobilize the people to a next level. That's the purpose of it. And um, it would speak to all of the main conditions. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, and that's it basically. How does this, how will people embrace it? They embrace it wherever you are. If you are a worker or if you are, you know, you're, just like you mentioned earlier, people, there are some people who feel that JLP and P, PNP is not much different. You know, them say, boy, why, why may I vote? It's not any different. Those people don't necessarily, are not necessarily um, conscious to the point where they are saying we need a different. But I'm looking at the comments here and there are some people who say we need a third party. There are some who are, are not necessarily at that stage. And there is... I'm not here to predict how the change will take place. 
or what form it took. The way it took place in the 70s is with Michael Manley, the WPJ, the PNPYO. The, the left had uh, a direct impact on the movement and that, that it formed a, 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 an alliance of sorts to help bring about certain change. I'm not talking about a repeat of the same thing. But what I'm saying is it must happen. It's inevitable it going to happen unless these conditions are addressed in Jamaica. And therefore, that's what the manifesto aiming to do. It's helping to, it's aiming to arm people towards a better Jamaica. Any additional comment? No, what I, I can do is from me. No, I'm talking about the panel, the members of the panel. I would suggest that as early as possible, you share it with the trade unions in Jamaica and not some other civil society groups and have a virtual meeting to discuss it with them. Right? Um, that absolutely. I'm sorry to cut you. I will be absolutely favorable to that. No, you are the man who can direct it towards some of these groups. And Lambert, Lambert is recovering. Lambert is the most influential person. <laughs> well, all right, that's me. another right. That's but another I would work point. with Lambert. I would work with Lambert, but Lambert and the man first name basis. Yeah. And he's almost fully recovered. He is? Yeah, man. Okay. I saw him at a funeral. Well, I saw him street. I was streaming the funeral the other day, and he was there. So but I he, guess it's, yeah, he's not he's not a hundred percent yet, but he's he's, he's, he's getting he's there. He's on the way. Yeah. Yes. No, no. Uh, that's the idea. Would be to like when you talk about the community councils, no, uh, that's the community idea. organizations, because some of some of the document don't have nothing. I don't know enough about those areas. You know, I believe I added the diaspora. The diaspora are what should what should happen with people living overseas. You know, Ratigan have a clear notion of uh well, I'm not sure it's clear, but it's certainly a more developed notion than I do as to how we can and I took some notes from that conversation. So this is the purpose of the document and the idea of, of uh, circulating it, getting it out there, building on it, on what we have. I think we should at least start by, you know, not at this meeting because it's past six o'clock now, but I think, Mikey, we should at least um, have one conversation to, to improve the draft and then out of our circle, we try and get it into these other groups. Can I ask that you, you talk with Paul as to those contact information? Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a given. Hmm. Now that we have his, his, yeah. we have his email and information, I, you know, we, we, to put it forward. But I think before it's, we send it out there, let's try and put some more flesh on the bone. Okay. Ratigan, it's very, very, it's very bony right now. <laughs> Ratigan, you have anything to add? Listening and learning. Okay. <laughs> Any additional comments? Well, Paul, comrades, I want to thank you very much for this discussion, you know, because I, I think it clarify a number of things for folks who are listening you know clarify as to all your electoral thing work in jamaica and we're gonna we're gonna continue the discussion because like many we are overseas but we're still in the yard our love no nothing's going to break that love for jamaica so we're gonna keep the fire blazing okay and 
again thank you very much to the listeners please i'm asking you like and share this video you should also subscribe to what those vibes we keep you up to date as to what is happening paul thank you very much my brother for joining us today until next time well, yeah, let me just say thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share my views appreciate it yeah, man. thank you In informative you. informative and yeah. frank thank you yes yeah yes. good seeing you paul good yeah. seeing you good seeing you but but before before um we leave. you know we, we we leave you know uh, when we go off here can we just hold on for a minute after we go off here okay no problem okay Let me do that. I think we're off here now. No. Still, still there, bro.